Assalamu alaikum. Hope you are doing fine. A substance which do not allow current to pass through is known as non-conductor or insulator. Gases do not allow current to pass through them. So they come under insulators. But they can be made to allow current in certain circumstances. When their pressure is reduced, they start conducting current. The conduction in a gas can be studied with the help of a device known as discharge tube. Discharge tubes are usually half a meter in length and 4 cm in diameter. They are made of glass. Here I have a small discharge tube. This kind of small discharge tubes are known as Giesler tubes. They are made of glass and completely sealed and filled with the pure gases. Here, this end, these two ends are called as electrode. A terminal which is connected to positive of the induction coil is called as anode and the terminal which is connected to negative of the induction coil is known as cathode. Here, I have four Giesler tubes. This one is filled with oxygen, the second one is filled with nitrogen, third one is filled with hydrogen gas and the fourth one is completely empty. It is evacuated. I have one more tube with me which is provided with a pedal which is given a coating of fluorescent material. I keep these things aside. I will pass current through them. I will show you how do they work. Let me show you an induction coil. This device is known as induction coil. It is used to produce a high voltage of the order of 10,000 volt. Uh, this device can produce 5 millimeter spark. Now, uh, these two ends, I have connected these two ends to a power supply. Here you can see. I have a power supply. The ends of this power supply is connected to the primary of this induction coil. Then this is the secondary of the induction coil to which I have fixed two sharp uh, nails as you can see. Now I am going to pass around a 6 volt current through this uh, induction coil. I will start. I switch on this. Then I turn on this power supply. So here you can observe the spark between the nails. Now here this spark is as a result of the ionization of gas present in the surrounding. Now switch it off. Now I will connect the, the secondary of induction coil to the Giesler tubes one by one and I will show you how the gas present in the tube discharges or conducts electricity. Let As you can see I have connected the secondary of this induction coil to the Giesler tube which is filled with oxygen gas. Now I am going to pass the current through it. Let us see what happened. I switch on the power supply. Here you can see the gas present inside the tube glows. It gives out white light and uh, the ends uh, cathode and anodes emit out blue light. For better visibility I, I will switch off the light. Now I hope uh, 
it is visible to you. I have switched off the lamps. You can see it emits a light blue color light. Now I will replace the, this Giesler tube with the, another Giesler tube which is filled with the nitrogen gas. It is filled with nitrogen gas. I will describe this now. Let us place, I connect it. I do the same thing to another end as well. I keep it aside. Here I have connected the Giesler tube filled with nitrogen gas to the secondary of the induction coil. Now I will pass current. I will show you how the gas discharges. I will switch off the lamp for better visibility. Now I have replaced this Giesler tube with another tube filled with the hydrogen gas. This Giesler tube is filled with hydrogen gas. I will pass current through this. I will show you how the discharge occurs through hydrogen gas. Now I pass current. Here the light is the light emitted is very hard to visible. Here I replace uh, this Giesler tube filled with hydrogen gas with another tube which is uh, evacuated from uh, inside. It has nothing inside. I pass uh, current. I switch off lamp for better visibility. Here you can observe no light is emitted. This shows that no discharge occur in this tube as it has nothing inside. Here I have a specially designed discharge tube which is provided with a pedal whose leaves are given a coating of fluorescent material. Now I will connect to the secondary coil of the induction coil. Now, I will supply current. Look at this carefully what happened. You can observe the pedals emit out green light. It is due to fluorescence and they start rotating. This shows that the invisible particles which are emitted out from the electrodes have kinetic energy and momentum. They possess momentum. As a result, it starts rotating. Now I will uh, switch off the lamp for better visibility. You can see how beautifully they appear. Due to fluorescence, the green light is emitted out. The invisible rays emitted out here are called as cathode rays. They have certain properties. We will discuss about them one by one. As I told you earlier, a discharge tube is a glass tube whose length is 0.5 meter and this tube have a diameter of 4 centimeter. Here the diameter is 4 centimeter. This tube is usually filled with some gas and it is provided with a nozzle which is connected to a vacuum pump such so that the pressure inside the tube can be varied and one more thing this tube is provided with the two electrodes the electrode which is connected to positive terminal of the induction coil called as anode and the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the induction coil is known as cathode this kind of a discharge tube as I told you earlier is used to study the conduction of electricity through any gas. When the pressure inside is reduced to 100, 110 millimeter of mercury, here millimeter of mercury is the unit used to measure the pressure. At this uh, pressure, it was found that no discharge occur. 
there is no conduction of electricity by the gas present inside uh, the tube. When it is reduced further at 100, 100 millimeter of uh, mercury, this is the symbol of uh, mercury, liquid metal. At uh, this pressure, the gas starts conducting electricity and uh, it shows uh, streaks with a crackling sound. Now, when uh, the pressure is uh, further reduced at 10 millimeter of mercury, a luminous column is seen, which is called as positive column. It is formed from anode to cath cathode. Here, at uh, 10 millimeter of uh, mercury, a luminous uh, column is uh, formed. As I told you, it is known as positive column. It starts from anode. It starts from here. It moves towards the cathode. When the pressure of gas is further reduced at the point of 0 0.01 millimeter of mercury, at very low pressure, the positive column, which was seen 10 millimeter of mercury, it disappears, it vanishes. And uh, this region gets filled with a dark space. We call the dark space as Krug's dark space. And uh, the outer region of uh, this glass, the outer region of a glass tube emits out green light. It is due to fluorescence and uh, a kind of invisible rays are emitted from the cathode from this end. We call uh, such ray as cathode ray as they are emitted from cathode of the tube. They are completely invisible and they are found to have electrons in them. So a cathode rays are nothing but a stream of electrons. Now we will give the properties of cathode rays. Cathode rays are invisible. They are invisible and they travel in a straight line. They travel in a straight line. Next, uh, they have affect the photographic plate. It is uh, observed that when uh, cathode rays fall on photographic plate, after uh, developing the plate, it shows the uh, dark spots. Uh, they affect uh, photographic plates. Plates. Photographic plates are used in photography. Fourth, when they are made to pass through gas, it ionizes them. They separate the uh, electrons from an atom and turns them into ions. So, they ionize the gas. Next, uh, when they are made, to fall on certain substance, they show fluorescence and phosphorescence. I will demonstrate what is the fluorescence. So they produce fluorescence and phosphorescence. What is this fluorescence? The radiation for a certain substance, the substance emit out light. We call it as fluorescence. And uh, phosphorescence means the emission of uh, light from an object, even when the radiation is removed from it. Or uh, we can simply say 
the delayed fluorescence is known as phosphorescence. Like uh, you have rosary beads. When it is brought to a dark room, it starts glowing. It emits out light. This phenomenon is called as uh, phosphorescence. Um, in highways, you might have observed, when light falls on the signboards, it glows. That's due to fluorescence. When cathode ray fall on certain substance, fluorescence as well phosphorescence occur. Uh, here I have this uh, tube. You see what happened? The pedals emit out green light. They glow green. I switch off uh, lamp now. See? The pedals glow green. It is called as fluorescence. We will see a few other properties of cathode rays. Cathode rays travel with one tenth of velocity of light. We see the velocity of cathode rays is one tenth of the velocity of light. Uh, simply in the equation form, this can be written as V equals to C upon 10. Here C is the velocity of light. This is the speed of or velocity of a cathode ray. It is also that when uh, cathode rays fall on certain substance which have high atomic weight, they emit out X-rays. X-rays are emitted from a substance with a high atomic weight. On exposing to cathode rays, cathode rays. And it is also observed that they heat an object when they are made to fall on them. They heat the object. They heat the object. And uh, the final last property says that they possess cathode ray possess kinetic energy and momentum momentum and it is only because of this when uh, when I pass the current through this discharge tube you may find the pedal starts rotating This shows that the cathode ray possesses a kinetic energy and a momentum. I forgot to mention one important property of cathode ray is that cathode rays are deflected by electric field and magnetic field. They are deflected by electric field and magnetic field. The B represents a magnetic field. Now I will show you how the magnetic field deflects the beam in the discharge tube. You see, let's turn this. I turn off the lamp. I bring a, a magnet near to this. You see, a deflection here. Where I placed the magnet, it shows the deflection. This shows that magnetic field affect the beam. I hope uh, this video is useful. If you have any kind of doubt related to the topic, kindly put a question in the comment section. Thanks for watching.